This time, we'll be designing an ATMM ducted fan and checking its thrust with different propellers. So let's start. This is the CAD model of the ducted fan with all its necessary parts. You can download the files from the website themacninja.com. All these parts are printable on any 3D printer. The propeller shown here has 6 blades but I have also made 2 other propellers with 8 and 12 blades for testing. I have already 3D printed all the parts with a 0.2mm layer height and 30% infill. So let's begin with the assembly of the ducted fan. First I will remove all the supports which were generated during the printing. So start with the easiest support which can be removed by twisting. Now for the complex support, use a set of nose pliers and a wire cutter. Grab the support with a nose plier and twist it from all the sides. Don't try to pull it else it may damage the part. Keep twisting it from all the sides until it becomes loose and it will easily come out. Use a wire cutter to cut the extra support. Once all the support material is out, you'll find some of the support materials sticking to the flat surfaces. So use a wire cutter and remove all of them. After removing all the support materials, the casing will be ready. When compared to the 100mm ducted fan, this one appears to be much smaller. Both the casings are of similar shape, only there is a reduction in size. The 100mm casing has an o-ring present at the lower end of the body to provide extra strength, while it's been eliminated from the 80mm fan as it's already smaller. Now we will remove support from the propeller. This is a 3 inch propeller with 6 blades. It is designed for any motor which has a shaft diameter of 5 mm. Now grab a wire cutter and carefully look for the line of joining of the support. Look carefully as both the blade and the supports are of same thickness. Then place the wire cutter on the support and cut it carefully. Make sure not to cut the blade. And then remove all the support material from the 6 blades. If you haven't watched my 100mm ducted fan video, then click on the i button and have a look. Now to remove the hub support, place the nose plier inside the support and twist it. After twisting it 2-3 to three times, it will come out. And now the propeller is ready. On comparing it with the 4 inch propeller, it has a reduction of 12mm on all the sides. This 4 inch propeller has thicker blades than the 3 inch propeller has. Now talking about the 3 inch propeller, these 5 grooves which I have designed plays an important part in the functioning of the EDF. I'll tell you how. In the previous version when the motor was attached to the propeller, you could see the motor was wrapped around it. And there was no way for air to get inside the motor vents. And thus the motor gets heated after long usage. We will be using a 2500 kV Racer Star motor in this fan. To check the thrust test of the motor, click on the I button. When we attach the motor to this propeller, we can clearly see the air vents of the motor. These grooves will push air inside the motor and cools it. Now we will begin the assembly of the ducted fan. So here is the diffuser which has a slot for the M5 nut of the motor. Here is the nozzle part of the ducted fan. Now take the motor and open its nut. Then take the propeller and attach it to the motor shaft. Try to attach it in such a way that the motor vents are visible from the grooves as it will help with faster cooling of the motor. And once we get the position, tighten the motor nut with a wrench. Once the assembly is finished, spin the propeller to check if it's offset or not. Then take the diffuser cap and place it on the motor nut and press it from all the sides. And make sure that the diffuser is perpendicular to the motor. Now it's time to attach the motor to the outer casing. So first match the screw holes and then fix two screws in the holes which are closer to the motor shaft. I am using M3 screws of 10mm length. I have not attached the other two screws yet as they will be attached with the nozzle. So grab the nozzle, insert the two screws and then fix it with the motor assembly. The last part is to take out the motor wires from the outer casing. The assembly of the EDF is completed and it's time for the thrust test of it. Before attaching the EDF to the test rig, I will mount this attachment to the EDF. So first take 4 M3 diameter nuts and insert them into the attachments groove. These nuts will help in attaching the EDF to the test rig. 
Now wind the motor wires together and place the EDF above the attachment. I am using 8 screws of M2.5 diameter and 8mm length to mount the EDF with the attachment. After connecting it, the EDF will have a flat bottom and it can be mounted on the test track. First I will calculate its weight. And its weight is around 115 grams. So this is the test rig which I made in the previous video. And now I will check the force needed to lift this arm in the mid position. And that's around 115 grams. So the total ideal weight becomes 230 grams. Now attach the EDF to the test rig and connect them with 4 screws of M3 diameter and 10mm length. Now the EDF is ready for testing. The string I have used here transfers the force from the EDF to the spring balance. I am using a 40 ampere ESC and a watt meter to calculate the current. Here is the lock screw of the test trick to restrict the motion and a servo tester to control the EDF. The wrench which I have placed here is used to fix the spring balance. This is the spring balance which can weigh up to 50 kg. To check the full video of the thrust test rig, click on the I button. So before starting this test, make sure to wear the protective glass. I am connecting an 11.1 volt lithium ion battery of 3000 mAh. Switch on the spring balance and start the throttle. The maximum thrust we got was 265 grams at 25.33 ampere. Adding the ideal weight to lift the arm that is 230 grams, we get the total thrust of 495 grams at 25.33 amperes. And now I will replace this propeller with the 8 blade propeller. First remove the diffuser part by pulling it out. And then hold the motor from the bottom and loosen the motor nut with the help of a wrench. Once the nut is out, pull out the propeller. Now I am using the 3 inch propeller with 8 blades. So attach it to the motor and fix it with a nut. Once the nut is tight, put the diffuser back on top of the motor. Now we will begin the thrust test of this 8 bladed propeller. So switch on the spring balance and connect the battery. The maximum thrust we got was 250 grams at 25.67 amperes. And adding the ideal weight, we get a total thrust of 480 grams at 25.67 amperes. Now I am going to replace this propeller with a 12 bladed one. This is a 3 inch propeller with 12 blades. I have already removed all the supporting materials from it. And now I will attach it to the motor. Now let's begin the thrust test of it. We get the maximum thrust at 245 grams at 26.35 amperes. And on adding the ideal weight, we get a total thrust of 475 grams at 26.35 amperes. Now the thrust test has been completed and it's time to check the cooling rate of the motor. So I will check the temperature difference between the motor with and without the diffuser part. The current temperature of the motor is 45.9 degrees Celsius. And now I will run the motor without the diffuser part. So I have run the motor for about 10 seconds and now I will check its temperature. The 
The temperature came around to be 39.6 degrees Celsius, which is about 6.9 degrees Celsius less than the previous one, and hence the cooling grooves of the motor are working correctly. The thrust test of the EDF has been completed and it's time for the observations. The 6 blade propeller produces maximum thrust of 495 grams at an efficiency of 1.73, while the 12 blade propeller produces the least thrust of 475 grams at an efficiency of 1.67. On observing carefully, you'll see that by increasing the number of blades, the thrust of the motor is decreasing and the current consumption is increasing. This means that on increasing the number of blades, the torque requirement of the EDF increases and the current consumption of the motor increases which leads to lower efficiency. We can conclude that the 6 blade propeller produces maximum thrust at an efficiency of 1.73 which is neither too low nor too high for a homemade ADF. Keeping that in mind, the motor which I have used has very high RPM but low torque and EDF requires a high torque motor. I have also tested this EDF with a 3 bladed propeller but the thrust wasn't even enough to lift the arm so I have skipped that part in the video. So next time I will only put up an EDF video if its maximum thrust and efficiency is greater than this one. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss that video. If you enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up or comment for any suggestion and make sure to check my other videos. So like share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.